and welcome back. I'm so excited about today's video because this is one of my favorite videos. Well, it's only the second time I've actually filmed it, but just the thought of filming all of my favorites for the year, like standout products that deserve a mention, um, is very exciting. Um, so last year was my first year getting to do the Best in Beauty of 2013. I'm actually going to link that below just for fun. You can kind of see if similar things. I didn't even watch it yet. Um, I do want to rewatch it to see if similar things um, showed up again. Um, since I have quite a few things I want to talk about, I'm going to split this video up into part one and part two. So this part one is going to be face products and blush, like cheek products, highlighters, stuff like that. Part two is going to be the color products, eyes and lips and all the other things that you do to your eyes, like brows and stuff like that. So that video you are going to see tomorrow. So Chit Chatter Day tomorrow is going to be part two of the Best in Beauty. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, I did mention it in Tuesday's video, I'm going to be having a new filming schedule this year. I'm going to be uploading on Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday. So I can have a little bit more time to focus into my blog and just less, uh, it's only one less video per week, is, I guess is, is the um, gist of it. If you guys are okay with that, please let me know. If you would like to see a bonus video, there might be bonus videos from time to time. Um, I just know that I don't want to put myself in such a rigid schedule this year and just kind of go with the flow more, relax a little bit more, and put up what I'm really feeling like. Um, not that I wasn't... Anyways, I digress. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, if you're really liking this look today, um, my mom and I filmed a Get Ready With Me on Tuesday, so um, if you want to see how you, to create this look or whatever, um, I will link that video below as well. So without further ado and chitter chatter and rambling, let's get into this. So I'm going to go in order of how I apply the products to my face. And so I'm going to start off with primer. Now, this primer was a late joiner to the ball game. But as soon as he joined, um, home run. But out of all the primers I've tried all year long, this one is number one since the first day I tried it. And it is the Smashbox Pore Minimizing Primer. Not only does this fill in your pores and blur your imperfections, but it makes your skin so velvety smooth, so velvety soft, that when you go in with your foundation, it doesn't settle into anything. Which is what makes the rest of my face look kind of, uh, because my foundation settles. Like, some of my primers are okay, but this one makes me look flawless. It makes me look airbrushed. It fills in all of my pores, and I have a lot of pores in between my um, brows here and in the T-zone area. It's just beautiful. It's velvety smooth. It's just seriously an amazing product. I really did like the Porefessional, but I think this does a better job. So hands down, favorite primer. Foundation was hard. I tried a lot of new foundations this year. So I'm going to show you the one recurring foundation. I've tried a lot of full coverage foundations. I've tr and that's what I really like if I want a flawless look. I want a full coverage. Um, I, uh, so hands down, this was a favorite last year. This foundation just out of all of my foundations that I've tried if I want long lasting if I want full coverage if I want to look matte if I want to look really really flawless I go with the double wear it is a long lasting foundation I've literally had this on my face for 24 hours and my face still looks good it's quite shocking it has a low SPF it works great for photography um, they don't make the shade I'm in anymore it's uh, 1w2 linen but they have since re like added some new shades um, I'm almost out of this, and I can tell you, sitting here, I will never be without this foundation in my collection. It is that fabulous. I also like to mix this in with other foundations just to boost up that coverage and the longevity factor. Um, this is just a fabulous foundation. I will, I will always have that in my collection. This next one I'm wearing today, it is just an absolutely beautiful foundation. I had picked this up in March, I believe, of last year, and it's just, it's just a winner. It's the YSL Le Teen Touche Eclat. Um, it has beautiful, beautiful finish. It's like a luminous, lit from within type of glow. I do set this with powder. Um, it has an SPF of 19 in it. I'm in the shade B40. It is just a beautiful foundation. It's not full coverage. It's buildable, but I would say probably medium coverage. Um, it's just a beautiful foundation. If you have oily skin, you're not going to like this. If you have oily skin, I would recommend this one. Um, any, any other types of skin combo, I would still set it with powder and you probably could get away with it. 
Um, I just love it for the finish. I think it's just a beautiful, it looks like skin, it doesn't look cakey. It just is a very pretty foundation. So it is pricey, but if foundations are one of those things that I'm willing to fork out the money for because that's your canvas. Um, if my foundation isn't flawless, then everything else you put on top of it just gets messy and it just looks kind of, yeah. You know, like I just, I'm really into foundations and I didn't realize how much I was into foundations until the end of the year. Just looking back, I'm like, wow, I was really on the hunt. I have like 15 foundations. To apply my foundations, my favorite way that I found this year, my favorite tool, it's actually a tool you can use for lots of different things, is the Beauty Blender. I just find that it gets rid of any brush strokes. It can shear out your foundation if you need it to. It's like a little baby massage when you get it wet and it grows to twice the size. It just, it's effortless. I also like to use this for right cream contour. Um, it's just one of those products where once you have it in your hand, you're finding, I found that I can use it for several different products. And sometimes when you're in a rush, you don't need, you don't want to be searching for your brush or it's dirty, this, that, the other thing. Just use this. I mean, I found throughout the year that whenever I would apply my makeup, I would use this to do my foundation. Then I would use it to do my concealer. Then I would use it for my cream highlight. And then when I was feeling really lazy, I would use this same beauty blender to dip into my setting powder and I would set my face with this. So this is just a do-it-all situation. You can buy it in a two-pack or, or a one-pack. This is the pro version. It's black. I like it a little better because the black doesn't show the staining as much as the pink one. I just love this, so definitely recommend the Beauty Blender. Let's talk about some concealer. So this first concealer, I tried a lot of concealers this year too. I think this year has been the year of trying. And um, partially because for the past couple of years I've just been trying lots and lots of things to really figure out what works for me, what I really like, what, you know, like, and you're curious too, you want to try something new, but the NYX HD concealer gets it done. It's $4.99. I'm in the shade Fair, I believe. Um, it's just, it It doesn't crease, it feels really nice underneath the eyes, uh, it gives good coverage. Now I don't have really dark under eye circles, if you do I would recommend a corrector, which they do make a corrector, like, um, but the, this actual concealer I think is lovely and it's only $5. Now the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, the reason I'm including this in my favorites, I do have a little bit of an issue with creasing on this concealer. But I think partially it's I'm not choosing the right under eye setting powders because some powders it creases and others it doesn't. So that's kind of my fault. Um, I'm in the shade NW20 for this. This is a very creamy, very emollient concealer. It blends out beautifully. It has a lot of coverage. I like to use it as kind of a brightener underneath my eyes, which is NW20. It's, got, it's a concealer and a highlighter for me in that shade because it's still kind of brightening. Um... Would I repurchase this? Yes, I would repurchase it just because of the fact that it offers great coverage. It blends out really well. It is a very nice concealer. It's just you have to figure out what setting powder to use with it and what setting powder not to use with it. I do have a little bit of a fine line situation going on, so I did want to include it in my favorites because I do like it. Um, and if I had to get rid of all of my concealers, I would. these are the two I would keep, so that's why I wanted to include it. Now, while we're talking about under eyes, um, I wanted to talk about my favorite under eye setting powder. It's the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. It's very finely milled. It has these tiny little light reflective particles in it that just really brighten up the under eye area. It's very pretty. And to apply my under eye setting powder, this is the brush I use every single day. Every single day. I have not found any other thing that I like. It's small enough. It doesn't get it all over the place. It keeps it concentrated in the areas that I need it. I've even used this to blend out the cream like my actual concealer, um, but I just absolutely love this brush. It's inexpensive, it gets the job done. It's really small and this is a beautiful combination. To set my foundation, I'm not a huge powder junkie. Truly, um, I just would reach for whatever powder is powder to me. Now if you're oily, you're gonna tell me differently, but that's because you need the powder. You need a really good setting powder. But this powder is more than a powder. It can be used on its own as a foundation. It can also be used as a setting powder. It can also be used on top of your foundation to give you just a little bit more coverage. It's just fabulous. And it's the Laura Geller Balance and Brighten. This is the shade medium. It comes in fair, I think light, medium, dark. It's just a fabulous product. 
because as I mentioned, it can do all of those things. I like to use it as a setting powder to give me just a little bit more coverage, a little bit more flawless. It blends really well. Um, it starts out as a cream product and then it is baked into this powder. So that's how they're able to get a really nice coverage on it. I, I definitely recommend checking out this, this product if you're looking for a powder that is going to do more than powder. It doesn't, that's the one thing I did want to mention. It doesn't make you look powdery. It doesn't make you look dusty. You know how powder you just kind of sits on top of your skin and I'm not a fan of that look. I like my skin to look like skin, but at the same time I need a powder to prolong the wear of everything and to do a little bit of oil control. So this is, I will always have this. Always. Okay, these next products, I'm going to talk about eyebrows. I know I should probably talk about it in the eyes part two, but I consider my eyebrows part of my canvas, part of the sculpting out situation. Um, I have figured out how I love to do my brows the best way, and I have two products. Sometimes I do both together, most of the time I do them on their own. Um, the Anastasia Dip Brow. I have the shade Chocolate. I Not only is this going to last you a very long time, <laughs> you get a lot of product for your money. If you have very thin, sparse brows, like I do, and you need to thicken them up and draw them, make them appear a little bit fuller, this is the product I would recommend to you. Now you need to be very careful with this because it is very pigmented, as you know, if you use this. Um, but I find that when I have no hairs and I need to make it appear that I have hairs there, this just, it sticks to my skin. I don't have to have hair for a uh, powder to stick to. I try to fall in love with powder and I'm still not in love. I still, I'm not even sure if I'm in like. I have it to play around with, but it's not my go-to. This is my go-to. My other go-tos are the um, Anastasia Brow Wizzes. I love these because they have a very fine, well this is the spoolie end, so that's fabulous. Um, mine's disgusting, so don't look close. I need to get a new one. Um, but it's a very fine point. So when you're drawing it on, you're getting a very small little hairs, which work great for me. I have two colors. This is medium ash. This is chocolate. This is a little dark. I do have just this on today. It's a little dark for me, especially in the summer when my hair was getting lighter. So I have the chocolate to kind of fill in. I like to sculpt out with this and then fill in with the chocolate. Um, it just, it's a great way to outline those brows. You can go in and fill it in with powder or use it in conjunction with the dip brow, but I really like the Anastasia brow products. I think they are very nice, um, and I've been very satisfied with these brow pencils. Alright, before we get into some of my favorite things, I wanted to talk about the MAC Fix Plus. This is my favorite product to take away that powdery look, to give some life to your skin, to make your skin look dewy, to hydrate your skin. It's a multi-purpose product. I use this to make some of my eyeshadows wet, to make my pigments wet. This is what I use. It's just a great product to have on hand. I've gone through a couple of these this year. I will always have this. The Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. This one is almost gone. I wanted to give this a mention. I haven't tried a ton of setting sprays, but I am satisfied with this one, so I'm not sure if I'm going to go on the hunt for a new one. Um, it just helps prolong the wear of your makeup. On those days where you put your makeup on in the morning and you're going to go straight from work or wherever, you're not coming home and you just want your makeup to look good all day, this really helps. Um, I would recommend checking this stuff out. Um, now I have not, like I said, I haven't tried everyone out there, but I don't know, I feel that this does what I want it to do, so I'm, I'm not going to go on the, on the hunt for it. I really do like this setting spray. Alright, let's talk about some bronzing and contouring. Um, the IT Cosmetics My Sculpted Face Palette. I love this. I've talked about this a ton. Um, these two shades right here are what I use to really contour, and then I like to use this shade here to bronze up my face. This is a beautiful, super creamy, insanely good highlighter. You need to be a little careful with that. Um, and then this is just a matte white setting powder you can use to set your under eyes. Just really brightens the face. I love this palette. I think these products are very pigmented. They blend very well. Um, I love the fact that it has two really nice mirrors in it. It has instructions on the back. I just, I think this is a do-it-all palette. You can also use these as blushes, as eyeshadows. There's no rules. I mean, truly, this is a do-it-all palette. Great for travel and... Definitely would recommend this for my contour. Two contour and two highlight, two brushes. I use them every single day since the day I got them. The NARS Eda brush, perfect for contouring, very precise. Um, 
to get into that contour area, the sides of your nose, your chin, wherever you want to contour, use this every day. The NARS Yashio brush is quite the underdog, but this is my go-to highlighter brush. It's tapered, you can also use this to contour if you want, you can use it as a blush brush, but for my smaller face in here, I just find that this brush gets it done. It's fabulous, it's soft, it's really lightweight, which at first kind of threw me off, but you know what, this is a fabulous brush. I use it every single day, and I don't, I don't use anything else to put on my highlighter, so I love that. All right, bronzers. Now, my favorite bronzer of this year I'm out of. It's the Laura Geller Bronze in Brighton. It's a very similar product to this, with the exception of it being a bronzer. Beautiful, beautiful. It comes in, you can get shade fair, or you can get shade medium. It has different tones, so if you have darker skin, of course, you can then pick a darker bronzer. It had the perfect amount of warmth and red to it, which is what I really like. But since I've been out of that, and I've had this Cover Effects bronzer in Sunset, I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm wearing this today. It's just a really good bronze for me. Um, I am fair skin. I do have a little self tanner on today because I was getting really fair. But even when I was really fair, this bronzer, it's not too orange. And I don't like bronzers that are orange because then it doesn't, it doesn't look right. It has enough warmth in it, but a little bit of red and a, just is perfect. I love it. I would definitely recommend it. It blends so well. It's just gorgeous. Another bronzer that I've really liked this year is the, I've almost hit pan on it completely, is the Bobbi Brown Bronzing Powder. This is in the shade Golden Light. This also comes in shades, so you can get it tailored to your skin tone, what you um, want to use it for, what you need to use it for. I use this just for bronzing. I don't use this for contouring. I used to, but I've since got the It Cosmetics one, and so that's what I like to use to contour. But this is a beautiful bronzing powder. Very creamy. Blends really, really nicely. Um, let me swatch it next to the... Uh, cover effects one. So that's the Bobbi Brown and that's the cover effects. I kind of a heavy swatch of it there. But you can see they're both similar in tone and they just really nice, nice quality products. Let's talk about some highlighters. Um, I have two highlighters here and I'm still on the hunt, but these two are my favorites out of all of the ones that I have. And one of them might shock you, actually. Um, I've seen a lot of favorites videos so far, and a lot of people have been talking about that Becca Opal. But for me, it has a little bit too much color to it. A little too yellow, a little too champagne. And it colors my skin. And so I need a highlighter that's actually lighter in tone than that to really just be a highlighter. And so this is my favorite one. Um, this is the Physician's Formula. Let me get the name right here. Custom, all-in-one custom nude palette for face and eyes. It looks like so. It has the instructions on how to use it on the back. I love this. Um, you can definitely reach for these darker colors here if you are darker skinned, but these lighter colors are just perfection. Perfection on the skin. I just absolutely, absolutely love it. It highlights my skin, but it doesn't give it too much color. And I guess that's why I love it so much. And the packaging is really pretty. Bulky, but pretty. Okay, my camera shut off on me. So anyways, as I was saying, this Warm Soul Blush, it just warms up your cheeks. It has a little bit of a sheen to it, so you don't have to wear highlighter with it if you don't want to. Just a beautiful blush. Definitely recommend checking this out as well. Another blush that I've loved on so much this fall, it's just stunning, is the NARS Oasis. It's like the shimmering berry type of shade. Um, it adds a little bit of berry to your cheeks, but a little bit of a sheen. It's just so pretty. It's very understated. It's not loud. It's not in your face. But it's just so pretty on the skin. I don't even know how to describe it except for the fact that it's my favorite. I love it. Definitely check that one out. Um, I picked a lot of blushes that... Um, none of these are very loud. Throughout, throughout the course of this past year, the colors I've really liked on myself are more so um, not about the blush. I really like to play at my lips and I really like to play at my eyes. So I've kind of learned to keep my blush a little bit understated. Not that blush can't be loud because it can in the right way. But for the most part, I've, I've found that a lot of the ones I really like are just um, kind of lit from within type of colors. So um, a drugstore blush I really love and definitely would recommend checking out is the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. I don't know why I'm holding it like this. Like I want to just give it a big squeeze. Um, these are beautiful. These are baked blushes as well. 
they have definitely have a sheen to them. This one has a little bit more of like a peach to it. It's just so pretty on the skin. It's that similar effect that the Warm Soul gives. So if you don't want to fork out the money for the MAC, check out the uh, Milani ones. It's just a little bit more peachy, but just equally as beautiful. Um, a really luxurious blush. <laughs> Oh, it's just so pretty and it smells amazing is the Chanel blush in the shade Rose Ekron. This blush, oh, you just open it up and you just feel like you're sitting in the chair at Nordstrom's and they're doing your makeup with Chanel. I mean, come on. Um, I love this. This color is just a beautiful rose color. It's so feminine. It's so soft. It blends like butter on the cheeks. You don't have to work hard with this blush. It's effortless. It's it's a it's a rosier blush, but it's a color that, you know, even though it has rose and pink to it, you can still put anything you want on your lips or on your eyes or whatever. It's just a really easy brainless blush. As are all of these, in my opinion. All of these are colors that you don't have to think about. What am I going to pair with this? Um, it, they just go. They're just very easy, simple blushes. Um, now this blush I'm going to mention, I'm not sure if you can buy it individually, but it is, it was available in a kit on QVC. It's a baked blush by Laura Geller. Do you see a theme here? Apparently I like the baked things. Um, baked Elements Blush in the, the shade Sienna. This is the most beautiful pop of peachy goodness on your cheeks. Like, this just reminds me of a juicy peach. It's so, so beautiful. And even this summer when I was more tan, I, re I mean, I wear this in, in the fall too, or even in the winter when I'm more fair, it's just the prettiest, prettiest peachy glow in your face. It just, it's so stunning. Like, I, I ordered the kit off at QVC, it was a Today's Special Value, just simply for the powder, her powder foundation that I've showed you. Um, but this came in that same kit, and those two products are worth more the, than the entire <laughs> price that I paid for it. So check out QVC as a side note uh, for their kits. But this is a beautiful blush. And this last blush is one of my all-time favorite blushes. It gives you that snow white glow. It gives you, it's not glow, but that effect. Um, it's a matte blush by Tarte. Looks like this and it's in the shade uh, Natural Beauty. It is a very natural matte strawberry flush on your cheeks. Like a little girl playing outside and or playing out in the winter time. You come in and everything's white but you have that little rosy glow. That's what this blush does. It's just beautiful. It's youthful. It's very natural because it's what you would naturally flush. And so I love this blush. So that's going to do it for part one of my favorites of 2014. So stay tuned for tomorrow. It will be eye products and lip products. Oh, it's, I have so many good things to share with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what some of your favorites were down below. And thank you guys so much for being with me this year. And I'm really looking forward to what this next year brings. If you enjoyed yourself, please like this video. Share it with your friends. If you are new and you're just stopping by, I hope you subscribe and stay a while. I would love to have you here. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye, guys.